Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And this has to be the weirdest car I have ever purchased. And considering my history, that is really saying something. But not only that, it's also barely functional as a car itself because it was a crazy custom show car where they got rid of a lot of the practicality and it's been sitting for a very long time. So it doesn't drive all that well. But not only that, it's also a total mystery regarding the history. What little I know just gives me more questions. I have no idea what purpose this car served when it was built almost 25 years ago. But here's what I do know. This car started life as a 1999 Cadillac Eldorado and it was never sold new. It really never left the factory's hands. General Motors designed this crazy custom Cadillac and then had California street rods in Huntington Beach, California build this in 1999 and then it was some kind of show car that they used all over the country. Probably for SEMA, maybe for some magazines. I have no idea because it predates the internet and there's nothing out there when I Google it. Other than it sold in 2009, GM had gone bankrupt by then and they were selling their entire museum. I suppose this would have been a part of it and they sold it in 2009 for 60 thousand dollars. Now the builder Chuck Lombardo and his shop, they were world famous. He died this year sadly, but he built custom cars for ZZ Top and so many other celebrities. He was a very big name in SEMA and the custom car scene, but since he just passed away, I can't get any information from him and I have no idea other than how extremely radically customized this Eldorado is, which I will show you today in a tour. But where I really need your help is finding out the history of this car. Why did GM have a custom Eldorado built? This isn't a concept car. This is something they just made to show off and they had it chopped, channeled and barreled to where it's four inches shorter than stock and lowered so many other custom touches. The build must have been multiple six figures and then it sells at a Barrett Jackson auction. I know because of their bankruptcy in 2009 for 60 grand and then I buy it recently for only $12,000. It's just such a total mystery and so cool and so detailed that I couldn't say no to buy this thing for $12,000 and figure out What's the story? So hopefully there's a viewer or someone who knows someone that worked at Lombardo shop when this car was built or worked at GM when they had this car commissioned or in the museum or whatever, or someone who was at a show and saw it and kept it in a scrapbook because I have absolutely nada other than the Barrett Jackson sales report from 2009. But today I will give you a tour of this Eldorado, show you how extremely crazy customized it is, uh, show you why it's not drivable. And then I'm gonna have it flatbedded to the car wizard to where he can look it over and hopefully help me make this car uh, just a little bit, well, a lot more usable. So let's start the tour. But before we get into it, today I partnered up with DraftKings, where even though the weather might be cooling down, the action on the field stays hot. DraftKings is an official partner of the NFL, and to help you get close to all the action right now, new customers who bet just $5 will get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up using my promo code Hoobies. The crown is yours. Now, if you're already signed up for DraftKings like me, you can get a no sweat bet. Get a bonus bet back if your same game parlay, SGPX bet doesn't hit. Max reward limits apply. Fans of multiple teams and want to bet on them all? Combine multiple bets together for a shot at even a bigger payout. If sports betting is not available yet in your state, not to worry. You can still join in all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. So you definitely want to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers who use my promo code and bet $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Hoovies only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Now let's get back to the video. Now for those of you familiar with the 12th and final generation of the Eldorado, the differences will be very, very obvious. But for those of you that aren't, well, I'll certainly point them out. But for some background, the Eldorado came out in 1953, a very long time ago. This was the 12th generation and the final came out in 1992 and was this body style more or less until 2002. Now a big unveil with this generation of Eldorado was the infamous North Star V8, which initially had a very good performance reputation, but then became notorious for its unreliability and bad head gaskets. They made improvements in 2000. This one being a 99, it does have that old bad North Star with the bad head bolts, but it appears to not be leaking and not overheating, but I can't drive it. But we'll get into the engine in a little bit. Let's start with the visual differences front to back. So the front the most striking is 
the front bumper being a lot slimmer and the headlights being very slim as well. I believe the grill does look more or less stock other than it being painted in this Ignite orange, but it completely slims up the front end. Now the body, it's obviously been channeled, I believe is the correct term, because it is a lot shorter than it is on the stock Cadillac. The fender is also extended out because the headlights are slimmer to making this all one piece. Very clean. It looks like a concept car or something out of like Back to the Future 2 when they went to the future and the 80s cars looked futuristic or like Demolition Man, another movie where cars from the 90s, Robocop, or 90s cars were made futuristic looking. It looks right out of one of those movies. Obviously the wheels totally custom as well and already they are a total nightmare. One of the problems with me driving this car is the tires are original. 18 inches in the front, 19s in the back. They're from 1999 and where do you put air in them? There's no stem anywhere on the outside of the wheel like every other car. It's on the inside and I couldn't see it. I had to take the wheel off. To do that, this actually screws off. There's a little part right here. I did some quick videos showing how I took the wheel off and then I could see the stem seal inside of this wheel. But then on the other wheels, it's actually flush and hidden, and I couldn't get any kind of air pump onto it with the wheels on. So that's why all these have very low tires, because it seems almost impossible to top off the wheels with air without taking the wheels off and having some special attachment that I don't think I have. And you can see taking off the back wheels, well, how crazy would that be? Because they put on these fender skirts, which go all the way to the back bumper and it's molded into the rear exhaust here which is actually functional and then the tail lights well they look out of something literally from the future the Cadillac DTS which came after the Eldorado so this was designed by GM and clearly they were using styling cues that they plan to use in the future because this didn't come out until I believe 2005 or 6 with the DTS that style of rear tail lamp and there's no way to mount a license plate on this thing because there's no screw holes this is like a European style license plate mount that is glued in, the glue started to come a little bit loose where they have the Eldorado, as you can see, it would be an A normally with the proper spelling because, well, it's the Eldorado hot rod. The whole body, every single panel has also been massaged where I think this is wider, but also the roof is quite a bit lower. But the strange part is this is stock glass. The windshield is stock. So somehow they made the firewall lower. I, I really don't get it. This is definitely factory way. These fenders would go over and I haven't figured out. I really need a stock Eldorado park next to this thing to figure out the differences. But one non-stock glass is right here. This is plastic. This is plexiglass. But when you go inside, I have no door handle. I keep reaching for it like it's there, but it doesn't exist. Uh, I have to open the door from the inside to get in. Now, this would have had an electric popper on it, like a switch, a fob to do it, but there's no fob with this car. You can see there's the popper right here. It would have pushed the door out and there would be an electronic latch in here to make the door release, but I don't have that anymore. So I can't park this car outside with the windows up because I couldn't get in. In addition, there's no mirrors on the side at all with this thing, but inside of this little inset right here is a camera, a very small camera, which we see that in supercars and hypercars nowadays, but this is in 1999. They were using little bitty side cameras for side view mirrors, but there's no screen in here. There's really nothing on the interior other than these peel and stick little carbon fiber things and a lower roof that would make you think that this is a custom Cadillac. It is 100% stock in here, original stereo, original climate control, everything totally normal. Now for me to fit, I do have to lean this seat back pretty far because the roof is low, but it is still a very nice, comfy Eldorado, but otherwise very stock in here. Now what isn't stock is when you start this North Star up, the exhaust, well, sounds fantastic. Nice little grumble there, but also, It sounds incredible. I had no idea Cadillac North Star could sound like this. I know there's the STS-V, a supercharged performance North Star mid-sized Cadillac that was rear-wheel drive. Sounded great, but this, this sounds so much better. But there is uh, some extra noise as well. Definitely a weird pulley noise, like uh, something that's been sitting for a long time because yeah, the North Star shouldn't be that noisy, like the power steering, some accessory has a pulley noise on it, 
But as you can see, very stock, very clean on the inside of this infamous 300 horsepower North Star V8. I'll shut it off so you can hear me better, but this car has 8,000 miles on it, which I cannot believe that was put on after this was customized. So it makes me think this was like a GM company car or a demonstrator or something. And then they took it to have it customized uh, because even all the years ago when it was being sold, it had, I think, these miles on it. If it's been driven two or 300 miles in the last 15 years, I would be shocked. But like I said, the engine does look very stock and the North Star is pretty darn weird. On this side, you actually have a cam belt that is running the water pump and then another belt on this side that runs all the traditional accessories. You have a couple of motor mounts up here, the ignition in the back, and everybody who's had one of these, I imagine, has had their life ruined by it. I've certainly had a few that uh, really ate my lunch when I was a car dealer back in the day, but I still have a soft spot for this thing, and I know the car wizard does too, even with this big mechanical gotcha, which is an engine out, basically totals the car because they are so worthless in stock form. Now. We can drive it a little bit, but with the low tires being so old, I don't want to take it on the road very much, but let's take it for a quick spin uh, before I have it loaded and hauled up to the car wizards. Now the sun is setting out here. The tow truck arrives in the morning to go up to the car wizards, but really don't feel comfortable driving it much faster than 30 or 40 with those low ancient tires on this thing. But when I do get up to speed, it does actually drive really nice. Now, from the factory, this would have had a rear air ride assist, and I think that's not working and why this Cadillac is sitting a little bit lower than it should. It's been lowered already, but I think they were able to adjust that air ride to make it help. So it is a little bit bouncy in the rear, but actually pretty darn smooth considering. And other than the low ceiling height, I wouldn't know that this is a modified Eldorado. It really feels and handles just like any other Eldorado of this period, and the traction control light does go off eventually, at least I think. It does turn off when I leave the car running for a while. Everything else in here seems to be working. All the electronics, the stereo kicks on, heated seats. I mean, it only has 8,400 miles on it. And other than the big mechanical gotcha of the head gaskets, these were pretty solid, reliable cars with that addressed or improved in later years. So it makes sense that this thing is held up so well. But it's also been stored and unused for years, which explains its level of preservation. But also, cars hate to sit. And the oil leaks on these can be very difficult to fix if it has them. I'm not sure it has. I can't really look underneath because it's so low. And I haven't seen it drip anything on the ground. But we will find out in the morning when Dennis, the tow truck driver, arrives and we take it up to the car wizards and see what he thinks and also see if he can help me make this a functional, usable car, even though it is so crazy custom and I don't think it was ever intended for that. And as I was pulling it inside, I just did what I promised myself I wasn't going to do and closed the door with the window up. And now, without the popper, I can't get in. I can pull this window out and try and reach in without breaking it. So now a clothes hanger is a necessary accessory uh, for the Eldorado to get the window down when you lock yourself out. This is hoopty life. Well, the Eldo is here and the Weezard, he's playing with his new toy, his new business here. even dribbling. So this is a lathe, right? Yeah, it's a CNC lathe. And why does it need to squirt white goo? It sprays it on the metal while it's cutting it. It's a coolant. Ah, could it be a different color perhaps? <laughs> it probably should be, but it's been white for since the 80s. Huh, interesting. Well, this was your old life here, working in a machine shop on a lathe just like this. So I guess look at that old Cold War era software there <laughs> wow so you can work this i can i can write programs set it up and do it all i'm gonna get it set up and let it run while i run the shop the new wizard tide hustle here mm -hmm. well you'll still work on hoopties right yes you saw it i did what do you think at first i thought it was an eldorado but as we started looking closer it was like a glitch in the matrix or something it's like that something's off then i realized it's some kind of a special car it is very special but uh, very broken and difficult to drive right now. So a 99 Eldo Rado. You see the um, oh, yeah. intentional misspelling down here. Eldo Rado. 
So I couldn't drive it up here because of the tires. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get air in the tires with any of the pumps I have. I don't know if you can, but still the tires are from 99. So driving it would be a little Ooh, sketch anyway. Are, yeah, that's over. That's 25 years old. Mm -hmm. But the body heavily modified, lowered, but very stock mechanically other than the exhaust. You got to hear this. Nice little rumble, huh? Sounds really good. It's like the old school hot rod Cadillac. Yeah, but you hear the little extra something? Yeah, I hear a winding power steering pump. It's like it's supercharged, the wine, but... Uh, but it's not. Yeah, if you put your hand on that, you can feel the vibration of that noise. Oh. Well, it's full of clean fluid. So my pump is on its way out. Very likely. With only 8,000 miles on this North Star. Now I know I have brought this car to the right place because you are the only person who has fully mechanically restored a North Star uh, multiple times. Multiple times, Which yes. is crazy what he did with the XLR and taking everything out. And then you had a, a DeVille, I think, as well, right? Yep, bulletproofed him with North Star Performance head studs, main studs, everything. Well, I don't think this North Star needs that with only 8,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping, I don't think it's leaking, but yeah, this is the last year of the bad North Stars. What would go wrong with them? The threads in the block are really fine thread and they would actually pull the threads out. Uh, the fix is bigger hole and coarser, larger threads. Yeah, I've had plenty of North Stars go supernova in my day, but they are a really cool engine and way out of their time engineering wise. They were designed to go 50 miles without any coolant in them. A lot of cool yeah. engineering stuff and mm -hmm. being transverse mounted made maintenance a little bit more difficult. And I know the oil leaks can be really hard to fix as well. Yes. I think you have to drop the whole cradle or lower the cradle or almost just basically lower the engine out to get the oil pan off. There's exhaust that goes up underneath of it. It's, it's a pain. So you notice that there's something missing down the side of this car? I see there's no mirrors. Yes. On that side, well, there's just a hole, but on this side. Now, keep in mind, this is 1999. But look inside there. Oh, what? There's a camera. Yeah, but no screen. So I guess they wanted to showcase some kind of futuristic thing. I mean, cameras and side view mirrors are just now becoming a thing 25 years later. I feel like... We shouldn't put mirrors back on this, but it'd be so easy with today's technology to make that happen. Right, we could do that. So maybe like a small camera here and then a screen just right where you would look if there were a mirror. And speaking of other issues, no exterior door handle. I locked myself out of this car once already. Okay. But the popper, you can see it have a fob that would allow this to pop, but it's not working and I don't have the fob, but I imagine there's something here to release the latch. Well, since all of the hardware is there, we would just need a control module and wire in the existing wires to that control module. It should work. Right. I figure we could just buy poppers and then mix and match and make it all happen again, right? Yep. Yeah, but other than that, it's just stock stuff. And I think the rear is sitting low because of the factory air system, the air ride, which you're very familiar with, right? All the Cadillacs blow out their rear shocks, the actual rubber bellows. It's something they blow out, the pump burns up because it runs forever. It's so common. I've actually heard the pump run once, but... We'll see. We can put it up in the lift and check it out, huh? Let's get it up there and see what we see. Wizard's noisiest lift. This one is pretty noisy. Need to go through lubricant. Well, you had some in your... White lubricant? Yeah. yeah. All right, is this the only non-leaky 99 Eldorado left in existence? <laughs> it appears to be. Wow. It's dry. Okay. Here's a tiny bit of seepage going on here. We'd have to see. It might be power steering or there's some hoses right above there. Uh, what's that accessory that's all this leaked thing? all over? Yeah. Well, that's the AC compressor. Okay. I know the AC works, actually. I think it's something up above that. All right. But nothing serious. Nothing dripping. Transmission is dry. Yeah. Well, I'm curious how they lowered the suspension because it is dramatically lowered, but it doesn't ride in the front at least too bad because it's functioning. I can see way up in there. It looks like they cut the coils and then put some sp spreaders. They're like silver colored. They spread the coils apart. 
so they cut the spring and it was too low and then they spread one apart to get the desired height something i think this was just made for photos i mean they they weren't planning on taking this on a nationwide trip or anything huh. you can see the same thing over here oh and this one it happened to roll just right to where you can see the stem for oh, the air yeah. there it's on the inside but then on this other one it doesn't have that it's flush it's a where is it yeah it's a flush flat stem and i couldn't get anything on it that's weird it unscrews and it, it's recessed right yeah you'd have to have it like a, a male adapter to fit into there or something right but i think it could take a normal stem no problem it clears the brake well enough mm -hmm. to where if i had new tires put on well i don't i mean you have to be careful of this caliper where it would hit all right, and still the uh, stock catalytic converter there. What is this? Some sort of a switch. That would have been for the poppers, right? Maybe. An emergency access? Is there one over here? Yeah. Sure enough. But it's not working. It doesn't do anything, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, that's that's very common to have on popper cars, but the system is dead. Mm -hmm. I would love for a hidden switch to exist again, just in case, but if the battery goes dead, you're still pretty screwed. Yeah, you're still screwed if the battery. Huh. Dead. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Here's our cat. Mm -hmm. 8,000 miles. You can see a lot of the plating and stuff on the parts is still there. There's still the stickers, like factory fresh. But being lowered, the undercarriage has taken... A bit of a beating here. Mm -hmm. You can see something they made here with the welding, like a channel. No drive shaft here, obviously. Nope, front wheel drive, but no muffler either. So we have the cat just going straight out, huh? I guess so, just cat only. And that's wow. why it sounds how it sounds. There's a little bit of scraping here. On the fuel tank, which is not good. But uh, let's see if the back is as stock looking as the front, huh? There's the springs. They probably just cut a coil or something. Okay. Or they've got some lowering springs. It should have the air suspension. You can see it has MagnaRide also air suspension because that's what that little wire, this this is the MagnaRide part. Yeah, it does give a service ride message. So I, I'm betting that those airbags on the shock are blown. All right. That's why it's not holding any air or not raising. I don't know if we'll be able to get those. We'll have to see. If not, we could uh, figure something out with these springs to raise it up. Yeah. Well, and there's still a lot of these cars on the road, and I know there's different options back in the day as far as retrofit kits or yeah. bringing it back to factory. We could look into that, too. I wonder if Arnott has any support for these. I don't know, because they're not they're not <laughs> worth that much. Uh oh, uh -oh the exhaust is broke there. Oh. Well, that's cool that it's functional, actually, the tips. It actually does work. Yeah, they're real. Very neat. And scraped a few times here as well, but nobody would see that. Yeah. On the Eldorado. Yeah, and unlike a lot of concept and really custom cars, I feel like this is capable of being something usable that you can drive. It could be. There's not major modifications where it's unusable. We could totally make this roadworthy. So you're not offended like when I bring you a crazy race car and all the no. crazy custom stuff. This is this is doable, huh? It's doable and it's something I only do for you. This is something I wouldn't offer to my customers because of liability. And I know you're probably not going to sue me into the ground if something goes wrong. Yeah, the only thing I could sue the wizard for is for assault if I ever tried to leave without paying. Right. Right. But <laughs> that wouldn't happen. I always pay. Yeah, you always pay. And with this one, it's going to be a little bit of a mystery as far as figuring out the rear suspension and the air ride and the poppers. Uh, stuff that'll take some research so i'll give you some time i won't wait around for you to click in the office and do some shopping <laughs> okay. and it looks like you have some milling to do as well huh? some lathing some uh, yeah definitely joyful happy endings going on back there so we'll update on the estimate and the progress on this car soon thank you so much for watching